Steve Austin, astronaut, a man barely alive. Gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. We have the capability to make the world's first bionic man. Steve Austin will be that man. Better than he was before. Better, stronger, faster. Hi, my name is Lauren Wasser, and I'm the girl with the golden legs. In 2012, I was a healthy, active, young woman. Played basketball, had a full scholarship, dreams of being in the WNBA. I had the whole world ahead of me. <laughs> um, and then I got really sick, and I had a 1% chance of survival. It took my legs, but it didn't take my spirit. And after this happened to me, I really had to find myself and trying to change people's ideas and views on beauty, I think it's pretty cool. Do not force yourself to accept your destiny. Change it. On January 11th of this year, I had my second leg amputated. Toxic shock syndrome has been around for over 30 years but no one believes it can happen to them. So I am the messenger. I am the one voice you'll hear, but there are thousands. No one gets a second chance, but I know I had to go through the last five years to get to where I am now. Today I will run for the first time. I'm starting my journey back to myself. I want to inspire, to empower, to educate, to make change. I'm a TSS survivor, an activist, an actress, a model, and an athlete. I am Lauren Wasser, and I am a warrior of the soul.
vast majority of amputees is suffering the phantom limb pain, which is often untractable with the present drug medications. Through the sessions of the intraneural nerve stimulation, we were able to diminish their uh, phantom limb pain until the full suppression of it. You want to get something out of the lab and help people with disabilities so that it doesn't look like an academic publication. It looks like access, and that's what we're going for. We're giving access to people, to anybody. Control is the biggest problem affecting the clinical impact of robotic legs today. But each researcher develops their own hardware first. So everybody's testing on a different system. So when people are publishing, hey, look at this control strategy, I could do this. It's very difficult for people to replicate it when they don't have that hardware. We have created opensourceleg.com to kind of unite this fragmented field of controlled prosthetic legs. So there's a bill of materials, which explains like where to get them to the vendor and a price. There's all the solid models, which are like how you would have it machined. The solid model files are all downloadable. There's also videos on how to go step-by-step -step through the assembly process. I mean, the website's open to anybody. And we already right now have five collaborators who are using these and test their control strategies. So like within a very, very small amount of time, we've gotten a lot of impact and a lot of interest. They don't want to feel like they're riding a horse. They want to feel like the leg is part of their body, moving exactly the way they intended to move. A typical robotic prosthetic leg uses a motor with many gears. Those gears add weight, make the joints stiffer, and produce unwanted noise. So University of Michigan Associate Professor Robert Gregg and his team tried out a new motor. We've worked with four subjects so far. They feel the push-off, the propulsion that the leg provides. It feels like it's giving them power to their walking gait. We're saying, okay, instead of going towards a really tiny motor and you have to introduce all this gearing to get the torque you need, we're just going to use newer emerging motor technologies that allow us to have high torque from the beginning and then introduce a small minimal gearing to get the torque that we need. It's a frameless motor, meaning that we have to design the support structure around it. We have to design all the housing, the bearings, the coupling to the gears. By getting rid of most of the gearing, you don't really hear it. You, you don't have to worry about the stiffness that the gears would introduce. 